Hello, my art-loving friends. Today, I wanted to show you the Rembrandt swatches I did here in real time because I think you can actually learn something from seeing them in real time. Plus, it's usually relaxing and I will chat about my thoughts on each color as I go through that. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Jumping right in, as per usual, the things I'm cutting out, except for this first time here, is that I pre-wet the bottom two thirds or basically three fourths of the swatch sheet so that the pigment can hit water and spread and we can see how it spreads, if it spreads and whatnot. And then I place the pigment on there. And I do show you a couple of these re-wetting later. And this one here is the Cadmium Yellow Medium. It's a PY35. I love me a bright lemon type of yellow and this fits the bill perfectly. What I'm also leaving out in the video is that after I swatch them, I drop salt down the right side of the swatch, and that is really fun to see at the end, to see how they react with salt, and it just makes it pretty. This one here is Payne's Gray. It's a PBK7 and a PB15. I really like this Payne's Gray a lot. It leans very black, so it's not blue, not really purple, but it has the blue pigment in it, and it's, it's really ideal. I love it. This one here is yellow ochre. It's a PY43 and a PY42. And I think because of that, I'm trying to think if it's the 43 or the 42, it just is a brighter, cleaner yellow ochre and I really appreciate it. I like it a lot. I accidentally dropped some cadmium red into it in a little bit, but I fix it later. <laughs> but you can see how rich it gets. It's just, it's a nice yellow ochre. It's not muddy. Some yellow ochres feel muddy to me. This is Cadmium Red. It's a PR108 with a light fast rating of one. I don't have all the light fast ratings on these. I didn't bother to look them up because I just didn't. Anyway, you can see that Cadmium Reds are usually granulating. This one, you can see a little bit of granulation, but it's pretty subtle. In fact, on it doesn't show up very much on the little swatch sheets at all, but you can see how it's kind of sinking into the roughness of the paper there. This one is Viridian, PG18 and a true Viridian which you can tell because I'm having trouble getting pigment out, which is just normal for a true Viridian. It's not a very strong pigment. However, it has its uses, and I'm actually grateful that they put a true Viridian in here instead of a phthalo green. It just makes it more unique than other sets, in my opinion. And it is just my opinion. <laughs> Next up, we have Burnt Sienna. This is a PBR7. This is a very bright Burnt Sienna. I really like it. I'm sorry about the fuzziness there, but that goes away here. Yeah, there you go. And I I find this to be a very useful color. And I haven't decided yet if I like the PBR7 or the PR101 Burnt Sienna's more than the other. I think it just kind of depends on how each company formulates the pigment because there are both pigments that I really like in the Burnt Sienna version. So, ah. This one's beautiful, I like it. I like all these colors and I'm probably a little biased because every time I go to use these, I have such fun that I just love them all. This one here is sepia, the most unique sepia I have ever seen so far out of all the watercolors I have. This is a PBK7 mixed with a PR101. Look at that, it almost reminds me of one of those really dark green in uh, some other brand. One of you guys will know what I'm talking about probably a Daniel Smith color or hey even that Paul Rubens or some of those like uh, Schmincke super granulating mixes. <laughs> anyway that reminds me a lot of a yellow mixed with the black but it's neat. I really like it and I found a good use for it in my alpaca painting that you guys saw last week. This one here is spinel. It's a PBK26 which is a manganese ferrite black spinel and I like it. It's beautiful. I would never used PBK26 before, at least not that I'm aware of. But can we just appreciate that sepia for a second? <laughs> that is like a true sepia, like a true, when you think of a sepia picture, that's kind of what I think of is that brownish tint. So that's pretty interesting. This one here is Cerulean Blue, PB35. I really like this color. It's slightly granulating. It's again, a very low tinting color, but you can dig in and get more pigment and make it darker if you want, or you can just use it light. So it's probably great for some beautiful summer skies or winter skies, it doesn't really matter, just skies in general. 
This one is the permanent green PB7 and a PY154. And whoa, is it bright. <laughs> also, I'm using the biggest Lindsay Wyrick brush here. And so that's why sometimes it, it first it takes me a while to get used to the water and paint ratio and then I put too much water sometimes. So you may see me digging into the paint more than you really have to when I'm actually painting with these. When I was painting the paintings with these paints, I guess there was just one painting, the alpaca. It felt like I barely had to touch the pan at all to get color out of it with the exception of obviously transparent titanium white and the coated glass one. This one here is ultramarine deep. PB29 and when I put this in with my other ultramarines this one is much much darker in fact when I hold it next to those this one looks very purple tinted compared to my others even though it has no purple in it it's a really pretty ultramarine I may prefer this to the others but we'll have to see as time goes on this here is every time I see this color put down on paper I just die with happiness. <laughs> this is the Azo Yellow Deep. It's a PY110 with a light fast rating of two. And I remember the first time I used this set, I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going <laughs> to, oh my goodness is what I meant to say there. Oh my goodness, I'm going to have to get more of this color because I imagine I will use this one all the time and it's going to run out first. It's just really pretty and bright and I love it. Following that is the Permanent Matter Lake, which is a PR 187 with the light fast rating of two. This is kind of, I, I wanna call this an ugly red, but it's not, it's, it's just a mixture between a red and a pink or a purpley red and a red, and it's not my favorite. Like, give me a Da Vinci red, give me, I think it was, what was it, Imgram's Naphthal red, I can't quite remember. They're just more pure red, but this is the only red in the set and I'm grateful to have it. It's just not my favorite out of all the reds. Next we have turquoise blue. Can we just die a little for this color? It's so pretty, you're about to see it. It's a PB15 and a PG7 mixed together. And the light fast rating switched on this one to three stars instead of a one, two, three system. So I believe three stars is one of the highest ratings, I hope. <laughs> If I if I look that up correctly, but look at that color so beautiful take me to I was gonna say the Bahamas I don't know what I'm thinking. Maybe the Bahamas wherever there's bright turquoise water take me there This one is cerulean blue thalo. It's a pb15 and a pw6 with a three star light fast rating Another very useful color now these last two here are the ones that were gifted to me by a very lovely subscriber friend. Thank you again. And they are two of my favorite blues in this set now, so along with this one. This is also part of that gift. This is Gamboge PY150 and the sought after PO48 with a three star light fast rating. Can we just appreciate this color also? <laughs> Beautiful, bright, pure, lovely. I am so glad to have it. Now this is that weird one, transparent titanium white. It came in a subscription box and we did some testing in that alpaca video with it to see how it lightens color because what it's supposed to do is lighten color without making it pastel. And I'm pretty sure we proved that that's exactly what it did. So if you wanna keep the pigment load without diluting with water, I guess this is where you would use this color. But I was trying to see if you could even see it on the paper, trying to get a second coat, a third coat, get a lot of pigment on there and you just can't see it. It is completely 100% transparent, just like it says. This next one here is a fun one. It's chameleon blue, green, gold. The pigment is coated glass and it's a little hard for you to see, but once in a while when I put the brush down there, you can see the little sparkles that pop up on the black line. And then I did show this to you in the last video at an angle in sunlight and then under studio lights you can see the sparkle and shine. Really pretty. I'm glad I have it. And that finishes up these swatches. I'll show you them all again here at the end. And here they all are again in their little business card cases. How fun is that? I really like that because they don't have to rearrange like a photo album kind of thing when you add in, in a flat file or whatever this is called. Kind of Rolodex style. <laughs> and I may actually get some kind of Rolodex spinny thing to put them in because it's really easy to add these in. So for example, if this one went right here, I can just put it in and I don't have to rearrange everything else. So I like this format.
What I want to know from you guys is which is your favorite color or colors? I'm definitely drawn to these two yellows, the Payne's gray for sure, and the turquoise blue and cerulean blue are both beautiful as well. Plus this very unique sepia, I just am enthralled with it. So there's a lot of colors here that I like, plus this really nice yellow ochre. Well, so far that is all the Rembrandt colors I have and I am grateful to have them. Thank you so much for joining me today for this watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. <laughs> How come Bruno's not over there playing with them? <laughs>